Hi, Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars again, and we wanted to show you in this video how to accurately measure the tube diameter if you wanted to purchase some tube rings uh, to fit your telescope up onto an equatorial mount. Now we get this question a lot because if you don't get the exact right tube uh, uh, ring size, it's not going to fit. And it's kind of difficult to measure the tube diameter, especially when you have this cell on the top that's a little fatter than the tube. You could always unscrew the cell so you have access to the, the bare wall itself, but that's a lot of screws and you risk dropping it into the mirror and uh, scratching the mirror. So it's better to use the circumference of the tube. So let's get started and I'll show you exactly how to do it. Well, the first step is to get some sort of a tape measure. Uh, I went to my local drugstore and I found this flexible tape measure. I think these are for sewing, possibly. Uh, they only had pink, but I'm sure pink is going to measure just as accurately as some other color. So wrap it around. Try to keep it as flat as possible all the way around because the, the more you're tipped off at an angle as you go around the tube, the, the less accurate the measurement's going to be. And just overlap it. And let me see what I got. I got 29 and 3 16 so just over 29 inches. 29, let's call it 29 and an eighth if I stretch it tight. All right, well, that's how you get the, uh, the circumference. If you don't have one of these, you could use string as well. Um, just, again, make sure it's nice and level around the, uh, the, the circumference. The flexible tape or the string method work perfectly fine, but like I said, it's sometimes not possible to get it exactly parallel to the tube circumference. So there's another method I actually think is the most accurate, and it involves uh, several sheets of 8.5 by 11 printer paper and some tape. First, take some printer paper and lay it end to end, butt up the edges and tape them so they're nice and parallel, they're not overlapping. Make sure you use enough pieces of paper to cover the overlap of the telescope. In this case, I'm going to be using three of them. Once you've got your paper taped up, wrap it around the tube and overlap it. And the nice thing about this method is you can overlap the top and the bottom of the paper so you know you're exactly parallel to the tube's circumference. And then just mark the edge of the paper. Once you've got the mark, take it back to your table. I, I like to tape down the end so it's not going to move on me when I do the measurement. And then just measure from one edge of the paper all the way over to the mark that you made. And in this case, again, I get 29 and 1 8 inch. All right, now that you've got your measurement of the circumference, in this case the 8 inch is uh, 29 and an eighth inch, you need to convert that to the diameter. So easiest is with a calculator. It's the circumference divided by pi. If you've got a scientific calculator, you're just going to, well, first of all, you've got to convert uh, the fraction into a decimal. So my circumference was 29 and an eighth. So 1 divided by 8, that's 0.125. So 29.125. All right, so that's my circumference, 29.125 divided by, and then just hit the pi button, equals 9.27 inch. So my diameter, very accurately, is 9.27 inches. Now, think about that for a second. This is an 8-inch telescope, and the diameter of the tube is nine, almost 9.3 inches. That's important to remember when you're uh, getting rings for your telescope. If you have an 8-inch telescope, you don't need 8-inch rings. You need something larger. And it's not always standard. Each manufacturer might have a different size uh, tube to go around the mirror. So using the circumference method gives you the exact diameter of the, uh, the telescope tube itself. All right, so I did my measurement. I found the right size rings that I need for this tube, and I've bolted them onto the dovetail. Um, in this case, I'm using a Dobsonian tube. What a lot of people like to do is also get some rings so you can convert your Dob tube to fit onto an equatorial mount. And in this case, with this uh, size dovetail, I don't even have to take the hubs off. I'm just going to leave it like that so I can convert back and forth really easily. And you'll notice these rings will get snug somewhere in the middle of the range because these rings are, are sized perfectly for this too. You've got a little bit of wiggle room. That's why when you're doing your circumference method, you've got probably a few millimeters. I, I'm not going to say much more than about two or three millimeters of wiggle room. But in this case, there's plenty of extra clamping power in case the tube was maybe another millimeter or two smaller. And then the last thing I want to show you on our rings, I do get asked this a lot. There's one thread here with a little plastic disc, and there's not one there. That is absolutely correct. You're not missing one. You just get one piggyback adapter because you can only fit one camera on at a time. You can't put a camera looking into the back of the other camera. 
So you get one thread and one disc per set of rings. All right, well, there you have it. Two rings sized exactly right for your tube. Thank you very much. Clear skies.